so you talk about great wins, momentum, plus uh, it factor. What a difference one guy makes, right? Like uh, there is just, I'm going to make a change for once in my life. Look at the man in the mirror. The man in the mirror for this one <laughs> was Jameis Winston, right? Like Jameis Winston came in today and the improbable happened. We watched an entire organization. And I mean everybody from the opening kickoff against the heavily favored Ravens in the minds of most. Cleveland came out with a fire. Cleveland came out with an energy. Cleveland came out like they knew they stood a chance. And we, we've we talked about Deshaun enough to, to just pass out at this point. Let's make this for a second about Jameis Winston. 27 to 41, 334 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Got away with a couple of them, but no picks in this game. <laughs> Played really clean football and just did what I think you and I have said Jameis would do for a long time. This wasn't just about quarterback play. This is also about read the room, read the sideline, feel the vibe, feel the energy. Jameis walking up and down on the sideline, just it hit different, Frank. And I looked at this and I thought, damn, like the season is not over. There is still enough football left for this version of the Browns to make a run and get to the playoffs. There's still enough football left for Jameis Winston to do the impossible. And I honestly think that there are so many people rooting for that right now. It is wild to see how everybody says that's what we expected the Browns to be. Yeah, I, I got to push back a little bit. I'll, I'll try to keep this no. on because it's the same thought. But I can't just gloss over Deshaun Watson here because – Whoever made this decision to keep Deshaun Watson in the starting role, whether that was ownership, whether that was Stefanski being a Lone Ranger, like my Tomlin likes to say, whoever it was, you look back now and you say that was malpractice. You screwed up this season. You punted this season. Why? For the feelings of uh, Deshaun Watson? Like, what were we doing? Because you're chasing a contract that's already sunk costs? Like, this team is two and six. There were one and six coming into this game. You look back at this game. Yes, this is a great win. It was a fun win. You, you, and you say there's enough There's enough football for them to get back in this. Yeah, they go nine and one the rest of the way or eight and one, however many games they got left. It's You look back at this and did this win and you say, that's what we could have been. That's what we could have been if our organization was competent enough to go with the right quarterback. Jameis Winston is not great. He looked like freaking 1984 Dan Marino compared to what they were trotting out there. They had not reached 20 points in a game this season. Jameis comes in, throws for 344 yards against a really, really good Ravens team. Jameis is not like some superstar. He is what he is. He's going to make plays. He's going to make bad plays. This game is over if Kyle Hamilton it doesn't drop an interception. It falls in his lap. Next play, Winston hits Cedric Tillman for a touchdown. This, to me, is, yes, it's great they got this win, but it's also, let's take a step back, 10,000-foot view of the Cleveland Browns, and say, how could you look your players in the eye And, and after this? Because you punted your season. You gave them no chance to compete this season. You were 1-6 with an obviously inferior quarterback. I was writing about it earlier this year. We were talking about it on the show. Other people, everybody was talking about how in the world could you not bench Deshaun Watson? And today we got proof that if you would have benched Deshaun Watson earlier in the season, you could have made something out of yourself. You maybe could have made the playoffs. I think it's too late for them. I, I just, you got six losses. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? You started 1-6. You're probably done. Today was, yes, a great win but also an indictment of whatever the decision-making process was to have the NFL's worst quarterback starting over anybody viable. And Jameis Winston was obviously viable. And even last week when DTR came in the game instead of Jameis Winston, and I was like, what are we doing here? Why? This is I, I, Kevin Stefanski is a two-time coach of the year, but something's, something's fishy, something's foul here. They screwed up their season, and today was just more proof of how this quarterback change should have happened weeks and weeks and weeks ago, if not back in the offseason. Okay, so I'm going to push back on your pushback. I don't know if that's okay. allowed in the way that we, we push things, but I'm going to push back on your pushback. And here's what I'm going to say. Right now, if you're the Browns, a couple of things. You you have Jameis in the, in the room, and you have the opportunity the rest of the season to see if maybe Jameis can actually be the other person. Because you know Deshaun isn't going to be him for the rest of this thing, so maybe there is something. But then the other side of it is, you know, we love to play the schedule game on this show. They got the Chargers, the Saints, the Steelers, the Broncos, the Steelers coming up. That run, every one of those games is winnable for them the way winnable, they played yeah. today. Mm-hmm. Every single mm-hmm. one of them. Oh, yeah. Them. Then they oh, have if you the, can beat the Ravens, the, you can beat anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I get that. Uh, right. Then they have the Chiefs, Bengals, Dolphins, Ravens to finish. The, the last month of the season is tough. Have they dug themselves in a hole? Yeah. Could I see them getting to the end of the year where all of a sudden they're trying to fight their way to 9-8? and eight? 
The way they played today, I, I just don't think nine eight's gonna be good enough in the. Eight. I think you got to go eight and one the rest of the year, and that's oh, okay. And, that, and that's, a, that's, that? a heavy like, that's to a get heavy the list. ten to get the ten wins. I mean, maybe nine and eight's good enough. You win some tiebreakers, whatever. But I, I just think it's a little too late. And again, I just I, I look back and I think this was so obvious to every. You didn't you didn't need an expert football mind to say why are you starting this quarterback who obviously can't play anymore? He's just done. He's cooked. He's finished. Like, what do you see in this guy? We were saying this for weeks, weeks, weeks. Again, you punted your season because of the sunk cost of a contract, because of some quarterback's feelings who doesn't probably deserve that benefit of the doubt. Let's be honest. Like, I don't know. I, I just find it. I think that, again, I think today was an, it was a great win for the Browns and yet also an indictment of how they screwed up the first seven weeks of the season and basically gave their team no chance going forward to make the playoffs. I think there are a couple of fun redemption stories here, though. Jameis, we just talked about. I think this yeah, could be the cool. beginning cool of something story, yeah. fun. Also, I got to give Kevin Stefanski a ton of credit for giving up play calling duties. That's a huge moment. Sure. And also, Ken Dorsey, who took over play calling duties. Let's not forget, he's the one that fired. got fired yeah. in Buffalo, right? So there was a concept that Ken Dorsey was so limited that it was holding back everything the Bills wanted to accomplish on the offensive side of the ball. I think there's a redemption arc here to Jameis with Ken Dorsey. And Kevin Stefanski saying, hey, I'll, I'll step back from all of this. Like, there is a humility involved in all three of these men in this process that really becomes one of the nicer stories we can have through the rest of the year. And th there is still a common thread. You and I agreed coming into this season that this Browns team was talented enough to be Super Bowl caliber if they could just get mediocre play from Deshaun Watson. Now, you and I disagreed on whether or not mediocrity was even in the cards on that. Yeah, Turns out yep, we right. were both wrong. I, I thought he was washed. I didn't think he would be horrific, right? So he, he was <laughs> he was so horrific at this job that at this point Jameis steps in. And I can't, I can't help but think that Kevin Stefanski right now isn't putting his feet up in his office, having a drink and saying, man, it feels good to actually see the team competently quarterbacked. Ken Dorsey's got to sit back and say, God, this is what offense is supposed to look like. I, I, I got to give a lot of credit to all of the guys involved in that. And, and by the way, look how good the Browns have been in basically games Deshaun Watson has not started the past couple of years, whether it be Joe Flacco or Jameis Winston today. Like, that's a good football team. Really good football team. If he just would have made the right choice at quarterback, but whatever. Anything to say about the Ravens? I, I kind of come out of this game saying, yeah, it's not great for your defense. You might have got some things exposed there or whatever, but I kind of am just like, eh, it, it. I expected the Browns to, to be fired up because usually teams are first game with a new quarterback, come out and they usually play well. They rally around that quarterback. And especially in this case, it'd be energized. All those guys know. All those guys know Deshaun's cook. They, they, yes, they might not have liked the fans cheering when he got hurt or anything, but. They all know in the back of their minds, this guy ain't, ain't it. And they'd be energized by like, wow, we have an actual professional quarterback now. I figured the Browns would play well. And that it was just a tough spot for the Ravens to be in. And I don't really downgrade them that much for this. There is a element here. Now that I praise the Browns, there's an element here that I think, to be honest, Ravens got really unlucky in this game. Like Zay Flowers had a, a drop on a third down Man. conversion where he lost the ball in the sun. The long touchdown pass by Jameis was absolutely incredible. Lamar running around before his heave at the end of the game where – Man, wide receiver doesn't slip. Maybe we have a different ending. Like, there are a lot of things that didn't break the Ravens' way. I'm not going to panic about this. I don't think this was suddenly an indictment. I do think it's a reminder that when the Ravens do not commit to and are not capable of running the football the way they want to, it becomes much easier to shut this team down. Now, I don't think that there's some common thread that goes the rest of the season that way. So I I'm with you on that completely. Okay.